So this thing is now running the AC unit, a full-size refrigerator, a freezer, charging a bunch of stuff. I just wanted to do a quick video on real-world survival during a power outage and as it relates to a very popular generator. This is a Honda EU 3000 IS. And I just figured I would take the time during a power outage to kind of explain what this thing can handle and how amazing it is. So just to give some background, um, where I live, we just got hit with a tornado nearby. In fact, I'll put a picture of a stop sign directly behind my house so you can see the kind of winds we just had. And unfortunately, we lost a lot of shingles. We also lost some of our fence and uh, did get a little bit of water in the house and needless to say we don't have power we may not have power for about five days and now thank god i have this thing i bought this honda about three years ago never really had to use it you know generators are one of these things it's like a smoke detector you just kind of hope you never have to use it but when you do it is nice to have so currently i have one single i don't know the gauge of this uh, particular extension cord but I have one single power cord that goes into my home that I ran through a window right here and I have been able to use this thing to power a freezer a full-size refrigerator a coffee machine coffee grinder a few lights and uh, charge whatever I need to charge I mean this thing's amazing it's really held up very very well you know despite all the stuff I've been throwing at it now, one thing I will tell you, though, is if you do have a large amount of uh, electricity being drawn from it, the gas doesn't last very long. I think that I'm probably getting about, I don't know, maybe two or three hours out of about a quarter of a tank. I'm not sure what that calculates down to, but um, it's still extremely efficient. And obviously, the more load you have on this thing, the more gas it will consume. And um, one thing that's really nice about these Hondas is that they are extremely quiet. And let me try to explain why that's important. So during a power outage, when you don't have any sound around you, if you have a loud generator, it's going to be very obvious. And number one, you're going to probably really annoy your neighbors. And number two, you're going to tell thieves and everyone around, hey, I have a generator. So it's good to have a quiet one because when this thing runs, you can really barely even tell that it's back here in my backyard. It's just incredibly quiet. And um, that's one of the best features of this thing. So yeah, that's uh, something that's incredibly important. Also on this particular unit, as you can see, I added wheels to it. That's very important as well because in, in an emergency, you got to be able to actually use it. So getting it out of the garage and wheeling it around is very easy. Even my wife could probably do it. This particular unit, I also added an hour meter. And as you can see, it's got about 21.9 hours on the engine, which is almost nothing, especially for me owning this for three years. This is an inverter generator, which means that it has an inverter that actually cleans the power. So all the power that's coming out of here is reliable it's a uh, sine wave power which means i can i can plug this you know i can plug up tvs i can plug up even medical equipment and i don't have to worry about it frying my stuff it's really really nice i'm only using one of the outlets right here there's also this 23 amp for feeding larger uh larger things like if you had a food truck or something or a back feed panel for your house you could use that but uh, let me go ahead and demonstrate how quiet this thing is. So let's go ahead and start it up. Let's pull the choke. And there you go. It is now running, as you can see. It's got that nice little indicator right here. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. I can try to point my microphone at it. Here's a quick recording just to demonstrate on my phone how quiet this generator is. It is running right behind this fence. And you probably cannot hear it. So here's a view from inside of my house with the generator running that you can barely hear. 
Uh, so I've got that really thick extension cord coming in. And I, I'm, I'm a big fan of buying the cords that have splitters on the end. That way you don't have to worry about it in an emergency. So I have this nice cord that goes to a three-way splitter. It also lights up on the end, which is really cool because when you're running a generator, you always know when you have a hot cable. This one goes off to my chest freezer that you can see there. This one goes off to a light, and this one goes off to another three-way cable. Now, just a disclaimer, I'm not an electrician. Some of this might not be properly wired, but I can tell you that it works great, and these cords are not heating up or anything. So here, uh, ultimate survival tool, go buy some bags of ice if you can and throw them in a nice ice chest. And that can help take care of really critical stuff. So here's the final run that I've got here through my kitchen. And off to a rat's nest of cables, off to my fridge. And um, I'm using a toaster oven right now, as you can see, that's on the generator as well. And I have a bunch of uh, cables over here for charging all of my devices. I was also able to run the Delonji along with the fridge and everything. It works fine. And um, full-size fridge doing its job with the generator. Now just a quick pro tip, if you have a freezer, you can usually keep it closed and it'll maintain coldness for about 48 hours. But if you have a fridge, it will only maintain that temperature for about four hours or up to four hours and you have to keep it closed. So you really have to have a strategy. My strategy is simple. I just make sure I, I run uh, the generator at least every two to four hours to keep everything cold and to take care of whatever I need to take care of. And so far I've only gone through about a gallon, or I'm sorry, about a full tank of gas in this thing. So again, the Hondas are so extremely efficient, it's just unreal. Another cool thing about these is that they do have an electric start. So if the battery's in good shape, you're able to just turn the key and start it. Otherwise, it does also have a recoil start on the side that is extremely easy to pull. Uh, usually I can start this thing up with just one pull. So we are now at the second day of living off of the Honda EU3000 and so far everything is going really well. As you can see I added an umbrella because we're getting a lot more sun right now. Uh, today we're going to start hitting the 90s actually, which sucks. Because it also probably means I'm going to have to go out and find an AC unit for the window that this thing can hopefully power. Uh, so far, just to give an update on the gas usage, I just now put some more in and I'm getting probably about 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours a tank, if I'm doing calculations correctly, which is beyond my expectations. I mean, I just couldn't be happier with the whole ordeal. Um, a few other updates. I have also used the air fryer without any problems. It is able to spin up the RPMs on the generator and power pretty much anything that I've thrown at it so far. I've also charged stuff like my laptop which is nice to do since you know that this is an inverter generator and it's not gonna fry your stuff. So, doing pretty well. Uh, just wanted to give another update. I'm always impressed with how quiet and powerful this thing is. They're not perfect, but what a generator. And if you're wondering how much these things cost, here you go. So as of three years ago when I purchased this, it was $21.99, but I did get it for $16.49 as an open box reduction of 25%. Now, I did get lucky, although I went out there when I purchased this thing, I had to look at a bunch of stores. It was after another outage, so it took me a while to find it, but when I got there, I realized it was an open box and they were offering me a discount, so I did get kind of lucky on that. But normally what you would be prepared to pay is about two grand for one of these. And as a side note on the fuel, if you live in Texas or if you have a Bucky's around you, um, there might be other brands as well, but you can actually go get ethanol free fuel. And I would always recommend that because ethanol free is the way to go. It will give you the ability to hold your fuel in storage for longer with a stabilizer without going bad and becoming a uh, jelly that's going to clog up your carburetor. And also the ethanol just burns a lot cleaner. I've noticed that this generator runs a lot smoother with ethanol free just wanted to put that out there. You're always gonna pay more for it, but it's, in my opinion, it's worth it. So one thing I'd like to point out is that the generator is really far away from my house. I think that's probably like five or six feet or so. 
and the output for the exhaust is on this side. And I just wanted to point this out because you really gotta make sure that you keep that exhaust away from your house. And if you're doing it like me and you're going kind of crazy, then you can put a towel on the other side of your window if you have to crack one. And that'll be just a little bit extra protection to make sure that you don't have any emissions coming in. Another important thing is that this room right here is completely locked out. No one's gonna be staying in this or sleeping in it or anything. Just that's another precaution is just stay away from the generator. And for example, if you need to use a window unit, you're not gonna put it here, because that's crazy. So you need, a, you need to put that window unit in, and then you need to put your generator on the other side of your house, you know, as, or as far as you can get, really. Just go get you the heaviest duty, longest extension cord, like this, and you can hook up that window unit safely on the other outlet, for example, which I can do right now. But the most important thing is to make sure that the window unit's not gonna be sucking emissions into your house. And with that being said, I do want to point out that this Honda does have a CO cutoff. So if there's too much carbon monoxide around, it'll actually turn the generator off. But despite that, your, uh, your family's safety is in your hands. You really don't want to rely too much on technology like that to save your life. But this right here does help having that safety switch. And there it is. So I ended up having to run to Home Depot and I bought the cheapest window unit they had that was reasonable, which was this Toshiba that was like 220 bucks. We've got it installed into a bedroom window and a nice thick extension cable. That leads back to our Honda generator. And so far so good. This thing's running it like a champ. I mean, I really haven't noticed any any rising in RPMs or any struggling or anything. So this thing is now running the AC unit, a full-size refrigerator, a freezer, charging a bunch of stuff, a bunch of lamps, some fans, and I've kind of lost track to be honest. So as I mentioned earlier, it's going to get into the 90s here where I live. So this is unfortunately, this is kind of like a a uh, necessary evil because we haven't had any ETA on when our power is going to be on. So it could be three days or it could be three weeks. It's just one of those things where you really want to get one of these before the masses go out and just, you know, buy all of them. So, so here we go. So far, so good on the window unit. All right, 58. That is not bad considering that it's set to 62. So needless to say, it seems like this thing is running as expected. And as a side note, the room itself feels amazing and I really don't imagine there being any problems as long as the generator can keep up and I can keep the gas full, then we're sh we should be good. And honestly, it's getting so cold in this room that I'm probably gonna have to turn this up. I have it on 72 here, but I have the fan on low just to try to be a little bit conservative. Grid power is now back after about three days or roughly 72 hours or so. Another thing that saved me during this outage is this right here, which is a lamp. They have all kinds of different brands. I'm not sure what brand this is, but I will put that in the video if I can find it. Uh, this thing takes like 8D batteries, which could be kind of annoying, but the result is that it just lasts forever. I have used this in a lot of different outages and uh yeah so an led lantern is something you always want to have on hand the cool thing about this one too is you can actually charge with it i'm not sure how confident i am in charging from alkaline batteries but it is what it is so yeah man uh this generator must have this kind of led lantern must have and maybe an ac unit and some other stuff 
and uh, you can survive a disaster. I hope this video helped you. I hope you never find yourself in this situation, but if so, have a strategy, be prepared, and you'll be fine. Another great thing to have for power outages are these motion activated solar lights. I've had this thing for like 10 years and it still works. So every time the power goes out for my neighborhood, I am extremely grateful to have this thing in my backyard. Another cool feature is that apparently it also holds up fences.